know y'all see the hair. I know y'all see the hair. I know you see the brown afro. I know you see the clear skin. I, uh, can we get into the fit? Can we get... Uh, and boom. Okay. Because... One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slay, okay? <laughs> Welcome to the Barbie Light 2.0 podcast. I'm your host, Shakira, aka Barbie 2.0. And today... <sighs> We're going to be talking about Miss Cardi B. Yes, we are going to be talking about the female rapper who does not write her own lyrics and has an IQ score of negative 0. 0.30. Okay, we're going to be talking about her. And I, oh. So this week, Cardi B went viral for telling black women to go 50-50 in relationships. And I'm just looking here like Cardi... Why would we listen to you? Crocky. My whole thing is Cardi. You be getting cheated on left and right literally every single week. Like it's so bad to the point where you literally paid men to beat up two women that your man was cheating on you with. You done got embarrassed publicly, privately, and whole time you you mean to tell me you getting cheated on and going 50-50? And you think we supposed to take relationship advice from you? Oh my God. Girl, first of all, I have so many questions. Because your whole relationship, you've been bragging on social media about how Offset buys you Birkins and he buys you these gifts and every Valentine's Day, it's a whole bunch of roses and a hotel. And you always brag about how Offset spoils you with cars and all this money. And whole time you been going 50-50 with him? Girl. Um, so now I'm looking at you like a fraud. Because all these years that you've been repping Offset, you've been acting like that man has been spoiling you. And he's been doing everything and, you know, contributing to the bills and being a man whole time. You going 50-50. I don't know if that was working out for you so well because just recently... Y'all were getting sued because you missed a few months of rent. So, you know, the funds don't look like they're circulating in the um, Cardi B family. The the offset, it's, I don't even know what their last name is. But it, it don't look like the funds are circulating, okay? So 50-50 or not, y'all down bad, okay? Y'all missing rent, y'all getting sued for missing rent. Like, girl, you think we finna take advice from you? You and I, oh, girl, first of all, you need to focus on that career. And you know, you know what? Before I even get to into her career, let's just get into this relationship right here. Because you know what? When she says she go 50 50 with him, I really had to think about it real quick. And I was like, you know what? That's actually believable. Because when you think about Cardi B and Offset, I feel like Cardi B has a bigger brand than Offset. Like, I feel like Offset as a solo artist is just a nobody, in my opinion. I feel like when he was a part of Migos, he was huge. But we have to remember, Migos was popping like five, six years ago. Where has he been since? Like, he did just drop an album, but no one really cares for any of the songs on the album besides the, you got me, got me working. I hope it's worth it. And he got washed up on his own song because nobody even knows that it's his song. People think it's Don Tolliver's song. So it's like Offset hasn't been popping for years. So I'm just wondering, like, where does Offset even get his income from? Because his music career has not been popping for the past five to six years. And Cardi B, even though she hasn't dropped an album for five to six years and even though, you know, I have my opinions about her in the female rap industry, I can't take away from the fact that she does have a huge brand in this female rap industry. She does. And she's still relevant today, even though she hasn't dropped an album in five years. And her brand is a lot bigger because she does get a lot of advertisement deals and a lot of campaign deals and things like that. And I don't see Offset in commercials the way I see Cardi B in commercials. I don't see Offset making appearances the way Cardi B does. Cardi B just has a stronger, more lucrative brand. So 
I wouldn't be surprised if Cardi B actually is the breadwinner in this relationship. And honestly, it makes sense as to why she hasn't left him. Because I feel like if she divorced him, she would have to pay him out a lot of money. Like that alimony would have to be some millions and millions of dollars because she makes more money than him. In my opinion, I think that she's the breadwinner. So it's like, first of all, before y'all even listen to Cardi B, y'all got to look at her and her relationship. This girl gets cheated on every single week. She's most likely the breadwinner. And then on top of it, it's like, girl, if we want to talk about how you and Offset even started, you was fetishizing this man. Because we remember when you was talking about, oh, well, you know, I, I, I like Offset and I, I like black men because I like cultures that are not a part of mine. I like to explore different cultures. Yeah, yeah. We remember that Vlad interview when you, when you were acting all fetishizing black men and saying that you like Offset because you like black culture. We remember that shit. OK, so it's like, girl, this whole relationship was set to doom. And we not taking advice from you because you're only in a relationship with a man because he's black literally you fetishized this man because he was black and you didn't get with him because of his character and now you staying with him and you struggling because he making you go 50 50 while both of y'all got money and he's still making you go 50 50 and cheating on you so it's like girl girl bye and that's the thing with you non-black women that fetishize black men Y'all love to get with these black men simply because they're black and you don't pay attention to their character. You don't pay attention to how they're going to treat you. And then next thing you know, you're a baby mom going 50 50 getting cheated on every single week. It's, it's sad, but it's like, uh, like, are we like, come on, stop getting with men simply because they're black. Look at his character. Okay. Like his skin tone or his skin color does not determine whether he's going to be a good partner or not, okay? So, like, just because he's black, that don't mean, oh, you know, let me hop in a relationship with him. Look at his character. Look how he was raised. Look how he's going to treat you. Don't just get with him because he's black. Like, and that's why I'm not even surprised that Cardi B is saying this because it's like, girl, you really did just get with this man because he was black. So, you don't care what else he comes with and any flaws that he comes with or what you are gonna go through in the relationship with him you clearly don't care <laughs> i mean you you telling the whole world you got a rich husband who makes you go 50 50 and cheats on you every single week if that's if it does it doesn't get more embarrassing than that okay like it doesn't get worse than that just saying Crocky. but what really annoyed me about this was the fact that cardi b had the nerve to tell black women this like she did not specifically say she was speaking to black women, but we know her fan base is majority black women. Like Cardi B, I'm sorry, but you're not a black woman. Like, and before y'all start telling me, oh, she's Afro-Latina. No, she's not. Okay. She was born in New York and both her parents are from the Dominican Republic in Trinidad. And I'm going to educate y'all real quick. Okay. Because there's a big difference between race ethnicity and nationality okay since she was born in new york her nationality is american but since both her parents are from the dominican republic and trinidad that's her ethnicity but can i tell y'all something okay the dominican republic and trinidad are countries just because you're from there that doesn't automatically make you black OK, there are literally white people who are born in African countries and their race is white. Because let me tell you something, your race is your skin color. Simple as that. And Trinidad and the Dominican Republic are just like America. When you come to America, you see a lot of people with African ancestry, Chinese ancestry, Indian ancestry, European ancestry. And that's the same thing in the Dominican Republic and Trinidad. It's a mix of a lot of different people with a lot of different ethnic backgrounds. And when you look at Cardi B's parents, they are not black. And it's clear that her parents are European Latinas. So just because her parents are from the Dominican Republic and Trinidad, that doesn't automatically make her black. Okay. And to be considered black in my book, 
To be a fully black person, you need to have two black parents. And to be a mixed black person, you have to have at least one black parent. And Cardi B has none of that. So she's not a black woman. So let's stop that there, okay? And this woman has done everything in her power to insert herself in our culture. And not only that, but she's literally done so much damage to black women's image. And now she want to sit up here and tell us to settle in this society? And she want to tell us to go 50-50? So you done ruined our reputation, you done ruined our culture, you done ruined female hip-hop, let's be real, because ever since you joined the female hip-hop industry, it's been total shit, because now we getting female rappers who want to be influencers instead of artists, okay? So not only are you just inserting yourself in black culture and ruining everything you touch, but now you want to sit up here and also give black women terrible advice. Crocky. You're not a part of our community to be speaking to us. Let's be real. I'm sorry. Like, you you really have the audacity to sit here and give advice to black women as if, like, you relate to us. No, you don't live our experiences at all. Like, you're not black. And you don't get treated like a black woman in this country. Like, let's be real, okay? Like, you went to the Harper Bazaar's event. You went to the Met Gala in 2020 and threw a shoe at Nicki Minaj. And you got on the cover of the magazine. That would not happen for a real black woman. Let's be real. Okay, so it's like you don't live our experiences at all for you to be giving us advice in relationships. Baby girl, no. Okay, don't give advice to a race that you don't belong to. Stay in your lane. Okay, let, let us take it from here. Okay, thank you. The, 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 the ones who actually are black. The ones who actually live the black woman's experience. Let let us speak to black women. You you just okay. You go fuck our black men and you shut up. Just as simple as that. But you you need to shut your ass up. Thank you. Okay. What you need to do, Cardi B, is you need to focus on that career. Because let me tell you something. I think you've been doing everything in your power to revive a career that's never gonna come back. Let's start there. Okay, you haven't dropped the album in five to six years because you know once you drop that album, it's not going to sell because your career started out from you beefing with Nicki Minaj and you got a lot of hype from that beef. But now that beef has died down and nobody's going to entertain it anymore and Nicki's not going to give you attention. So now you don't have no marketing plan. So now you're not selling. And then on top of it, you're being accused of stealing other people's music and other people's flows. So girl, you need to focus on that damn career before you start giving people advice about relationships when your relationship is already in the toilet. Let's start there. Okay? Like, Crocky. Even recently, she got on a remix with Flo Millie, and I'm not gonna lie, Flo Millie, we gonna have to have a talk because I was I was mad disappointed to see Flo Millie get on a song with Cardi B. I'm like, girl, what? Uh, uh. But either way, Flo Millie had a song "Never Lose Me," and it's been doing well for her. Okay, and she put SZA and Cardi B on the remix, and when I tell you. Cardi B done ruined this song so hard. Like, I feel so bad for Flo Millie because it's not, she's not going to chart. If she just had SZA on the song alone, that song would have charted and probably would have went number one. But Cardi B ruined the song. Like, first of all, in the beginning, it's just Flo Millie and SZA and it sounds perfect. And then once you get to Cardi's part, she talking about some, you texting his phone while his face in my coochie. And I'm like, oh my God. And like, she sounds horrible. And she takes up most of the remix. Like literally, she they cut out most of Flo Millie's verses. And they gave SZA like two seconds of shine. And they gave Cardi B like 70% of the song. And she ruined it so hard. Like you, when you listen to the song, you literally listen to the first 30 seconds with Flo Millie and SZA. And then afterwards, you turn it off and change the song because Cardi B's part is so horrible that you don't want to stay there and listen to it. Like she ruined the song so hard. And I feel so bad because it's like, girl, like Flo Millie could have charted. This could have been Flo Millie's big one. And look at, look at you. Touch it. Everything you touch, you just start ruining in it. Like, ruin it in it. You're ruining in it. Like, you got me saying words that are not even English because you pissing me off that bad. Come on, Cardi. Come on. Belkilees. Get it together. But when it comes to addressing what she said, I really pray that black women are not listening to Miss Cardi B. 
and going 50-50 in their relationships, okay? I need y'all to understand, this whole 50-50 conversation is only geared towards black women, okay? No one is sitting up here debating about this topic with other races of women. They're not, okay? You don't see people trying to tell white women that they need to go 50-50. You don't see people trying to tell Indian women or Chinese women that they need to go 50-50. Other communities don't debate about this because it's already an expectation that a man is supposed to be a provider. It's only in black culture that the lines got blurred and for some reason, it's like, Black men don't know if they want to provide or if they want to be the bitch in the relationship. Let's be real. Okay. So, and honestly, this all stems from how most black men are brought up because let's be real. Most black men do not have a father in the home. Like, even if you look at the statistics, more than 50% of black children are raised in single mother households. Okay. Not that many black men have an example of what a true provider is because they only dealt with their single mom. And I actually talked about this on a podcast a while ago, and I pretty much explained why the black community has this 50-50 plague struck on them for so many years. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna watch the video and talk about it, hold up. A lot of black men who are raised by single moms seek a woman who's going to mimic their mother. What's wrong? You have an example of a single mom who is going to work, coming home, cooking and cleaning, so you think like your partner should be that way. And we know a lot of black moms are softer on their sons too. So they expect their girlfriends to be the same Sometimes. way. So then when they get a girlfriend, they expect them to be just like their mom because that's what we normally seek our parents, right? So what's wrong with that? What What's wrong with that is when they do get with a strong black woman, a lot of the time they can't handle it. They feel intimidated by it. You can't be like, oh, I want a woman who's feminine and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Blah, and still want a woman like your mom. Exactly. Because your woman like your mom did not she didn't have the opportunity to tap into that femininity. Exactly. But, what, but but that's not even being, we're having two separate conversations yeah, we right really now. Are. We're not. No, no, we're no, not. No, we're on no, the no, same page. Yeah, no. So when a black, the average black man gets next to a strong black woman, a lot of the time they feel the need to humble her. They feel like they are intimidated by her and they have to break her down because a lot of men want to feel dominance in a relationship. So when they get next to a strong black woman, it's not what they think it is. They seek that because that's what their mom was. But then when they get it, they don't like it anymore, right? Because she's she has strong opinions. She's independent. That's why we see a lot of black men say that, oh, black women are too masculine. I can't have my woman make more money than me, right? Because they see that as too much too tough too independent too masculine that's because like we live in a society where we have a power structure based on race we have we can't run away from that black men are at the lowest when it comes to power structure because they're systematically oppressed and racially targeted right so then when we look at white men for example they are at the top of the food chain and they're comfortable in their position in society so when they're next to a strong black woman, they don't feel the need to humble her or make her feel, you know, like small or break her down because they're already comfortable in their position in society. So then when they get next to a strong black woman, they feel like that's their equal, like an alpha being with an alpha rather than a black man. They feel like they're competing for their power. So can I can I get a round of applause because uh, can, can I get a round of applause, please, because. Did I not just say some facts? Did, did, did I not just say some facts? I know I did. I know I spilled the beans. But for real, let's really unpack what I just said. Okay, because I said a whole lot, a whole lot of, but it was a whole lot of facts. Okay, because one thing about it, majority of them do seek their mothers in relationships. So they seek a strong black woman who's going to go out and work and then come home and cook and clean. And then when they actually get in relationships with these types of black women and then they realize that these black women are masculine, they're like, oh, I want her to be submissive. But you want her to go 50-50 while being submissive to you. Like, it's not adding up. And the thing is, like I said, a lot of them don't have a father in the home. A lot of them don't have an example of what it is to be a traditional provider for your woman. A lot of them just looked at their single moms and saw their mom do everything. So they think that when they get a girlfriend, the girlfriend is supposed to match the same energy as their mom. And it's like, no, baby, 
Your single mom did everything because she had to because there was no man present. But if there was a man present, your mom should have been just at home cooking and cleaning and taking care of the kids. She should have never been working and then coming home and then also splitting bills and then cooking and cleaning. She only did that because she had to. And what you didn't see is your black mother was going in her room and probably crying her eyes to sleep every single night because she was struggling so hard okay and that's something that a lot of you black men don't realize y'all praise your single mothers and you want your girlfriends to be like your single moms and y'all don't realize that your single moms were crying and upset and struggling and never happy in the situation that they were in because they were doing shit that they weren't supposed to do they were stepping into their masculine energy and taking on the responsibility of being a mother and a father which is very very hard on a woman okay so you can't expect your girl to act like your single mother okay your mother was a single mother for a reason your girl your girlfriend is not single they're you're the man you're you're her man so be her man but for some reason black men can't grasp that idea they cannot grasp the fact that they're supposed to be a provider and unfortunately they're not willing to learn either a lot of them want to stay stuck in their ways so we could sit up here and explain shit we could sit up here and give them statistics and unfortunately most black men are not willing to learn or change their ways a lot of them want to stay stuck in their ways and they want to stay arguing over 50 50 relationships while still asking for a submissive woman a lot of them want to stay delusional a lot of them want to be babies in their relationship a lot of them want to stay bitches in their relationships they want to be the girl but also want to call the shots a lot of them are really just not willing to change that because they know they benefit the most from it they get to split bills with somebody while also getting sex and food and their house clean for them i mean I, I, if i was a man 50 50 sounds pretty nice to me shit my bills get cut in half i get free meals all the time and you know my house is already clean for me and then I, I get coochie whenever I want. That that sounds nice, but that's not being a man. And a lot of them just don't want to learn. So my advice to black women is stop looking for love with black men who are not willing to learn or change so that you can get the love that you deserve. Okay? Stop waiting for these men to get it together. Stop waiting for these men to finally get it. You've been preaching it for years. We've been telling black men that we want more and we deserve more for years. And what have they done? They just argued with us. None of them have actually changed or improved anything. So how many times are we going to waste our breath? How many times are we going to keep begging the same group of men to treat us right when they are not willing to do that at all? They're not willing to listen to us and they're not willing to change. So my advice to black women, if you're tired of going back and forth about 50-50 and debating with black men on what you deserve as a woman, go date out. Go date out. Because I promise you, like, I, I have a white boyfriend and let me tell you something, never once have me and my boyfriend sat down and had a conversation about who's paying a bill, who's splitting what what's 50 50 my man has never even had the audacity to ask me to pay for anything like he would feel embarrassed if i ever picked up a bill he would feel like like it would feel like his pride got shot if i had to pay a bill or go 50 50 with him okay so black men i'm sorry but y'all are the only group of men who are begging for 50 50 relationships okay Go date men who already know that it's an expectation for them to be a provider. Stop going after these black men who got single moms and then never had a father in the home and then they begging you to go 50-50. You're, this is a fight that we're never going to win because they're never going to listen to us. So you just need to go where you're loved and appreciated and where you're going to get the best treatment, okay? Please don't listen to Belky Lee's. Cardi B has an IQ score of negative 0.00001, okay? So 
she's not somebody to listen to and I just want y'all to really have your standards in check okay because as black women y'all gotta understand you are the blueprint especially dark-skinned black women you're the blueprint and you pretty much are the reason why humankind exists and you set all the trends and black women hold your head up high okay you're the most educated in America you own more homes than black men do, okay? You are up there and you are the prize and you deserve to get treated like the prize. And if these black men can't give it to you, go somewhere else. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys very soon. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Shakira, aka Barbie 2.0. And I talk about colorism, texturism, and featureism, and any issues in the black community. So if you like me and my opinions, just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you guys very soon. And I love you guys so much. Peace.